Let's look at this example. We are given a set of standard orthographic views for an object, uh, the top view, front view, and the right view. And we need to draw the isometric view. This is actually not a good set of orthographic view. The reason is because the right view here has too many hidden lines. So if we would have used the left view instead, it would have more visible lines and less hidden lines. That would be more ideal. But this poses challenges for us to draw isometric view, which is a good practice. So we're still going to use this set. So uh, I have the isometric view uh, grid paper on the right hand side. Once again, make sure you're using the paper in the orientation that you have this vertical line. So we're going to correspond one grid to one inch. The dimensions of this part are given in the orthographic views. And the outer dimension, you can see we have a width of 10. We have a height of <laughs> 8 plus a 2. So together, that's another 10. And then we have a depth of uh, 4 plus 2 plus 2. So that's an 8. So again, this is an awkward set of orthographic views. OK, so 10 by 8 by 10. So with the outer dimension, we're going to draw our box. OK, so this right here is our 10 and the height is another 10. And then we have an 8. That is the uh, depth. All right. So this defines our front plane, outer front plane. This defines the outer top plane and this defines the outer right plane. So. I always like to draw what is actually on the outer planes. In this example, we don't have a lot of options. So this first rectangle right here is on the outer front plane. Uh, that corresponds to this line right here on the top view. Um, to the left of this line, this is a quarter circle. Uh, and it is actually not on the front view, front plane. So that's the first thing we want to draw. And that dimension is going to be a 5 plus another 1, so a 6. 6 by a height of 1. So that's the first thing we want to draw. Keep in mind that this line right here is not here because this is not the very right plane. The very right plane is this plane. So make sure that you draw it not to this corner right here, but a little bit um, inwards. And next, we're going to draw these two circles that are actually on the outer right plane. So to draw circles, we need to mark out the center, and then we use a little square window to mark out the diameter of the circle. So this is the circle that has the diameter of three inches. So you can see how this window is starts from here at uh, like a half location right here, ends here at the half location right here. So from here to here, that's going to be overall three inches. So that's the window for the outer circle. And then the smaller circle has the diameter of two inches. So this is a little window for the smaller circle. And this is the small circle. So for this example, these are the only lines that are actually on the outer surfaces. So now I'm going to draw all these lines but keep in mind that these lines do not belong to the outer surface. They actually belong to this surface right here, which is again um, 10 minus 7 minus 1, 2 inches from the outer right surface. So 
first thing, I'm going to draw the bigger circle. And what you see here is to mark out its center from here, move, moving to um, units displacement to get to this point. So that's the center of this bigger circle right here. And the bigger circle has a radius of 2 inch. So draw a square that is 4 by 4, correspond to its diameter of 4. And then from there, draw out the bigger circle. And then connect the straight lines. Again, when you connect the straight lines, do not connect it to this corner. Don't connect it this way because, again, everything is on this surface right here. And then we're going to draw this smaller circle, but also on this surface. Earlier, we draw this circle here. That's the circle on the very outer right plane. Now we're going to draw the same circle, which is where this circle projects to this surface. So basically, we're going to draw the same circle, but move inwards by two units. And then connect them to draw out this cylinder shape. Okay, so that's what's happening on the uh, right plane. So now we're going to draw out this surface, which is basically drawing a copy of this line and this line, but displaced by one unit uh, from right to left. Pay attention to how you connect this. When you connect this, it's going to be a line that is going to be parallel to this line right here, but tangent to both curves. And also, don't forget the tangent line here. We're drawing an isometric view, so we do need to include the tangent line here. Now we're going to draw this quarter circle on the top view. So because we're drawing a quarter circle, we don't have to draw out the entire window for it. We draw the entire window for a full circle, but for half circle, uh, sorry, quarter circle, this is enough. And then we're going to draw out this circle right here with this small window. And then we're going to draw the same copy of them, but on the very bottom. Earlier, we draw them on this surface. Now we need to draw the same copy on this surface moving down. But we don't have to draw everything. We just need to draw the portion that is visible. And same thing, uh, connect them with tangent lines. And then we're going to draw this line right here. And that's easy. That's basically a line right here with four units. And now we're going to draw the rib, which is this triangle that you see here. So this rib right here has a width of one inch. Therefore, if we find the center of this piece, so this overall dimension is eight inches. So the center is one, two, three, four, right here, four inches from this edge right here. And the rib will start at half an inch here and another half an inch here. So that is the overall width of the uh, one inch of, for the rib. So we're just going to do our best to draw a line from here to here to uh, touch a surface like this. And then for the height is four inch. So we go up one, two, three, four, like this, and then connect it to have the triangle. And then do another copy 
but because not everything is visible, so you just draw another parallel line and then delete everything that is not visible. And that's the rib. So for the rib, you just the tricky part is to make sure that you know where the location is. And then we're gonna fill out that quarter circle and then half and that full circle. Good news is that not all of them are visible. You only need to draw the visible portion. And that's it, it's complete. This is isometric drawing, so please do include tangent lines, but not hidden lines. All right, get rid of the box. Now, if you compare this to the image generated by SOLIDWORKS, they should be highly similar.